And now it's time to talk to the editor for Australia's Astro Space Magazine and now affiliated as a writer and publicist for the prestigious Australian Science Magazine. Good afternoon, Dave Renicky. Good Gilly. Good to be with you and uh, good to be on, on, on your program today. It's Thank you very uh, much. It's been, it's been five weeks. I think I've been away. I've been, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I've been running around doing things, and, but I'm back. I'm back. Well, the universe, <laughs> the universe is still there. It's Gilly. still it there. Changed. There's been a lot of uh, new things found and yeah. a lot of new things to find still. You know, I think the words of Carl Sagan really ring true uh, when he said one time, he was asked about how much more do you think <laughs> out there. He said, somewhere, sometime, out there, somewhere. Yes something amazing is waiting to be found oh, so yes. I think that's pretty good logic I love Carl Sagan always have and uh, yeah poor God bless his soul now Dave uh, we're going to get straight into it now the space race right now on the TV it's all around the place the uh, SKA the, the world's biggest telescope out the outback there in um, Western Australia to New Zealand it's huge isn't it uh, tell us about it tell us uh, what it consists of and uh, what are they going to do if we get it yeah, Gilly, this is an amazing uh, array of telescopes. I mean, we're part of that. Australia hopefully will get this telescope array in Western Australia. It's, um, it's called the SKA, and that means Square Kilometre Array Telescope. Well, simply put, we need a huge telescope, and this will be the biggest telescope ever built by human beings. When we put this telescope together, it'll have the collecting area of one square kilometre. So they're building lots and lots, thousands of very small 15-metre telescopes radio telescopes to be spread right across Australia and into New Zealand. Now, joining these up electronically gives us one big giant uh, We, As I say, we've never built anything this big before. Now, this telescope array promises to employ a lot of people. It'll uh, be groundbreaking in its technology. It'll download, get this, more information in one go than everybody on the planet right now <laughs> who's downloading from the internet. Wow. It'll do that. It's got so much cap it's got resolution capability more than what we uh, even dreamed of five years ago. Now with a telescope this big we'll be able to probe the edge of our universe. We're going to be able to go way back in time and have a look at the universe when it was born. We don't have those baby pictures yet. Now this is a radio telescope, not an optical telescope, so it works in the radio wavelengths. It, it can penetrate clouds of gas and it can go back further than an optical telescope can because it's simply not impeded by, uh, by anything in its way. Now, there's one thing that astronomers need to know. We, we, we need to know the, the birth of the universe. How did it fall? Where did it come from? And the favoured uh, explanation at the moment, of course, is that it came from a Big Bang. Now, we're not quite sure whether that's the true story. We're, we're pretty well sure that it, it comes close to fitting a lot of the parameters we need. But, look, we need to, to see that original glow from the Big Bang, and a telescope this big will probably do that. And that will put the rest of the, the start of the universe, how it became what it is today. It's in a continual expansion mode, so this telescope is going to probe way back in time to, um, to an area or, or, or an era that we've never been able to do before. The second big thing with this telescope, I must tell you, and this is pretty dear to my heart, it's the SETI program, Searching for Life Outside the Earth. The biggest question we can ask ourselves as a human being, as a species of people, is are we alone here? Is there any, anyone else, else out there? And this telescope will help do that. If ET is out there, and we believe he is, we're going to hear him with this telescope. We hope to have this telescope somewhere at the back of Geraldton, 300k east of Geraldton, somewhere in the middle of Western Australia, where it's very quiet. You need quiet areas like that. You need a place that doesn't have rainfall. You need a pretty even sort of temperature range too. We have that in Western Australia. The, the, the competition we've got is South Africa. Mm. It's come down to us out of 22 nations and the... Um, uh, well, the, the result's going to be handed down next month and I hope it's in our favour. But this telescope, as I said, will be able to listen to ET. If he's out there, if he's on a planet around another star system within 100 light years from here and he's radioactive, in other words, he's communicating within himself, we'll hear him. We'll hear him. If ET mm -hmm. is out there and he has any form of communication at all and he's making signals, radio, TV, broad, short wave, it doesn't really matter. If he's out there within a hundred light years radius of a planet Earth, we'll hear him. If he's got a radio set turned on in his kitchen, we'll be able to pick it up. So we're at the start now, we're at the edge of a brand new frontier. We're at the, uh, well, we're about to answer the age old question, and I think we'll have that answer within 10, maybe 20 years. And that question is, are we alone in the universe? And this big year will probably do that. 
And we're getting plenty of uh, assistance, plenty of support from the government, aren't we? We're getting, uh, I think, Julia Gillard, uh, the yes. government's providing, what, $40.2 million or something? Yeah, there's been a concerted push and a big effort on behalf of our science minister, Kim Carr, before. Yeah. He was a previous science minister. But a lot of money put into it and a great effort put in by Brian Boyle mm. and a lot of the other people, people at Mount Stromlo's, Tidbin Villa, Siding Springs. It's a combined effort to try and get this radio telescope array here. So you're going to hear more about the SKA, and it's a joint venture between us and New Zealand, and I hope we certainly hope we get yeah, it. Yeah, well, there you go, folks. Now, the SKA is um, nearly... It's, it's all happening, isn't it? I'm proud to tell you, too, uh, by, by, by the way, Gilly, they're sponsors of my program, my educational and outreach okay. programs we have. They've, uh, they've come on board. Now, I promote them through schools, through public talks that I do every week, and on the radio, too. So the, uh, the, the, the Australian government, the SKA project, the Australian government and New Zealand government are proud sponsors of, uh, oh, of my great. program. I do. I'm pretty happy about that. Very good to be involved like that. Now, now let's move on to another one, Dave. Uh, now, this one here is going to interest um, my listeners as well as myself. The triple star system, about 22 light years from Earth. Yeah. Tell us about this, uh, this host star. It's an amazing What's going find. on there? We've found this with a ground-based telescope called Keck. It's on Hawaii. It's a big telescope in the, on a mountain in Hawaii. Now, this is a triple star system. And it's only 22 light years from here. In other words, we found another star system which is pretty close to what we're looking for. We're looking for another Earth out there. Wow. And the holy grail of astronomy is to try and find that duplicate planet Earth. And I think we're within five years of doing that. But this, pla this place we've found, this, this world we've found out there is not ideal, but it's pretty close. It's got a mass of about four and a half times that of planet Earth, and it receives about 90% of the light that comes from it. Now, this is a, a, around a very cool star, but this planet is in the right position in its solar system. We call that the Goldilocks zone. Hmm. It's a good name, isn't it? it is. The habitable zone between the planet and the sun, where it's not too hot, not too cold. Now, when we look for planets around other stars, we look for that zone. That's where we expect to find life. This world has the requirements of life on it. We haven't found any there at the moment, but it doesn't mean it's not there. It has a moderate temperature of what we've got at the moment, 20 to 30 degrees, and there's a good chance that this world may have running water mm -hmm. because with a temperature range like that, you're going to probably find that it may have that requirement, and that's water. Now, where you find water, and when you have a temperature range like that, you can very easily find life there. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're at the edge now. We're, starting, we're standing at a brand-new frontier in, in the year 2012. And between now and the end of this decade, I think we'll have the answer we're looking for with regards to, is there another planet out there like planet Earth? So I think the answer's going to be yes. Yes. And what about the sun? What about um, the planet sun? It's a bit different from our sun, isn't it? It's called an M-class star. It's a lot cooler than we are, mm. therefore the planet can be a lot closer to its star. It spins around the sun very quickly. Uh, one day there is not very, very long at all. But uh, the interesting thing about this is only 22 light years away. And that may seem a long way, and it certainly is. I mean, it's, it's not next door. It would take 22 years for your radio signal just to get there. We can't travel anywhere near that. We can never even think about doing a trip to that place, you know, in the present time. But that doesn't mean it's impossible. What's impossible for the science of the 21st century may not be too hard for the science of the 22nd century. It's just a technological problem. But one thing I do know and it's proving true that we're finding more planets out there around other stars than we'd ever dreamed possible. There are so many, and there's a telescope called Kepler that's in orbit around the Earth, Gilly, and its job is to look at hundreds of thousands yep. of candidate stars, and we try and find those stars out there that we think may contain planets that are in that right position. And do you know how hard this is? It's like trying to find a firefly in front of a, a searchlight from Sydney to Perth. What they do is they wait for the star to blink. And when that star blinks, we know that something's moved in front of it. So they'll wait for a week, a month, maybe a year. We don't know. But they'll keep a constant vigil mm. on that star. And if it blinks again, we know that something is still moving past it. Now, we watch it for three times. If we get that blink three times in a row over a certain period of time, we know pretty sure that there's a planet there. By working out how much of the light has been blocked and how frequent that blinking effect is, we can determine two things. We can work out how big the planet is and uh, roughly how far away it is from its parent star. To show you how difficult this is, from here, 22 light years away, 
all that distance, we are measuring a wobble in that star. We can also use the wobble of a star to determine if a planet's out there. So when the planet goes around a star, it'll make the star wobble one way. When it goes around the star, the other side passes around it in a circle. It'll make that star wobble backwards right. slightly well, the opposite unique. way. And by using something called the Doppler effect, we can determine if there's a planet around that star. So one's called the blink method, where the planet moves in front of the star and dips the light, and the other is called the method where the wobble method, where it causes that star to wobble. Do you know the amount of wobble we're measuring, and this is fantastic from here, we're measuring a, dif a difference in speed of that star's rotation of five kilometres an hour. Oh, my God. That's it's amazing, amazing, isn't it? Yes. Dave, another great afternoon of knowledge. We must go. It's time to go again, unfortunately. But uh, you've been good, and uh, it's been very interesting. Nice to be with you. Good to be with you, and talk to you again next week, Gilly. Thank you very much, Dave.